welcome back to my channel or welcome if you are new and welcome to my kitchen. Today I am sharing another crock pot recipe video with you today. So what's for dinner this week? All things crock pot. So all of the recipes in this video are super simple and easy just the way I like them. Also, I do want to mention, I am so excited. This is a collab with one of my very best friends here on YouTube. Her name is Mandy from Mandy in the Making. I always call Mandy the queen of what's for dinner because she has such good what's for dinners. She has great recipes. She does slow cooker recipes, crock pot recipes. She just got into using her Instant Pot, so she's gonna have a lot more Instant Pot recipes. But overall, her channel is just great. She also does grocery hauls like I do, so you will love her channel if you love mine. And I will link her video down below in the description box. She's gonna have a lot of cozy, yummy recipes in her what's for dinner this week as well. Also, if you're coming over from Mandy's channel, hello, my name is Mackenzie, and I would love to have you stick around and subscribe. I do grocery hauls on my channel every Sunday. I also do what's for dinners here on my channel and shop with me videos where I go into the store and I share what's new as far as grocery is concerned and sometimes fall fashion. So if you like that kind of thing, hit the subscribe button. You'll have plenty of recipes, plenty of grocery ideas, and also some meal planning here and there. So. Anyways, let's jump right into the video. Okay, so for today's super easy crock pot recipe, we are going to be making crock pot chicken and gravy. And for this recipe, you're gonna need about a pound of chicken. I have four really small chicken breasts. You're also gonna need a can of cream of chicken, some garlic powder, two packets of chicken gravy mix, some sour cream, salt and pepper, and two cups of water. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna season the chicken on the front and the back with garlic powder and salt and pepper. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and put in the cream of chicken soup the two packs of chicken gravy mix, and also the two cups of water. And we are going to whisk this mixture together until it's smooth, and I already have my crock pot on low, so. All right, once you get the gravy to a smooth consistency, you're gonna go ahead and add in your chicken and you wanna make sure your chicken is covered with the gravy mixture. I will probably just serve some green beans and some rice with this and it will be perfect. Just make sure you get that chicken in there really good. So that was super easy. Once you're done with that part, you're just gonna come in here and you're going to put your crock pot on low and I'm gonna do about six hours. You would probably need to do six to eight hours or you could cook it on high for four to six hours. It really just depends on what you wanna do. And then we'll come back and check on it and see how it's doing. Okay, we have about two hours left on the crock pot. So we're gonna check on the chicken and gravy and see how it's doing, see if it's ready. Oh yes, it is ready to be torn apart a little bit. So I'm just going to do that, stir it around, and let it cook its full time still. And then I'll come back in here in about 45 minutes or so and get started on the rice and green beans. Okay, so time is up on this crock pot chicken and gravy. It looks absolutely delicious. I've got some rice over here, some dressing and some green beans. This is about to be delicious. All right, so this is what the finished product looks like. I have some rice with chicken and gravy with my dressing and green beans, and I'll probably, of course, drizzle a little bit of gravy over my dressing, but 
this is what it looks like. Super easy dinner night and super family friendly. All right, so for today's recipe, you can see that I am browning up one pound of ground beef. Let me turn this down just a little bit so you can hear me. I might even move it over just for a second. We are making crock pot chili and this is one of my all time favorite recipes. Ansley loves it. It's so, so easy and it only takes a few hours, honestly. But we're just gonna use one pound of ground beef, one can of tomato sauce, one can of chili beans, one can of pinto beans, and one packet of chili seasoning mix. And then also we will use these Fritos later on along with some shredded cheddar cheese that you will see when I put my chili in the bowl later. But let's get started on adding all the ingredients. Also make sure when your ground beef is done cooking to drain it before you add it to the crock pot. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and set my crock pot to low and I'm gonna probably put it on about four hours. This chili does not take long at all to cook. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and pour in my ground beef, easy as that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna add in is my chili beans. And like I said, you can add in peppers or green chilies or whatever you prefer, but my girls just won't eat that, so I don't. Sometimes I'll put some peppers on top of my chili afterwards and make sure you do not drain your beans. Next up, we're gonna put a can of pinto beans in. Once again, do not drain. I love pinto beans. I always liked pinto beans as a kid too. I can eat them by themselves. Let me know down below in the comments if you like pinto beans. Next up is one can of tomato sauce. This is 15 ounces. Just in case you do not know, you can add any type of beans to this recipe you want. If you wanna add two cans of chili beans instead or black beans, whatever you wanna do, you can do that and it will still turn out just fine. And then of course, the last thing I'm gonna add is this chili seasoning mix. All right, so once we get to this point, we are done adding in all our ingredients and we're just gonna give it a good little stir. I'm probably going to add maybe a half a cup of water to this just so it's not too thick, we'll see. I'm gonna go ahead and put the top on it now and then I'll check on it later. And if I feel like it's a little bit too thick, then I'll come in and add some water. Okay, so once we have it all mixed together, we're gonna go ahead and add our lid and then we will come and check on it in just a couple of hours. So honestly, I should have had Aubrey stir it up just a tad while I was gone, but it is looking absolutely delicious. And like I said, you can add another pound of ground beef to this, another pack of chili seasoning, and another can of beans. And it would be perfect amount if you have a larger family. We just have four people in our family, so this is perfect enough for us. And like I said, if you want to, you can always add more water to it and cook it a little bit longer or let it simmer, but I think it looks perfect. All right, so here is my finished bowl of chili. It looks so good, I can't wait to eat it. Okay, so this recipe is very, very easy and so delicious. This is overnight breakfast casserole, and it's perfect to cook overnight. That's what I'm doing right now. As you can tell, it is nighttime in here. My entryway table does not have any decor on it because we're in between fall and winter or fall and Christmas decor. But what you're gonna need for this recipe is 12 large eggs, some salt and pepper. You're also going to need a pack of diced ham or you can just use whatever ham you prefer. This is what I'm gonna use, a 16 ounce pack of diced ham. You're gonna need one bag of shredded hash browns, around 26 ounces to 30 ounces. You're also gonna need some garlic powder, some shredded sharp cheddar cheese, you're going to need some milk and that will be all. Once I start adding everything together, I will let you know the measurements as I go. And as always, it will be in the description box. That went just about as smooth 
this egg cracking can go. So then you're gonna whisk all of your eggs together. Y'all know the process of cracking eggs is not fun. I got this one egg that just does not want me to get it. It's just like sticking. All right, so next we're going to add one cup of milk. Now after that to your egg mixture, you're going to add your garlic powder and your salt and pepper, but I am just going to eyeball mine a little bit because it's salt and pepper. I mean, what can it hurt really? I think it calls for like a teaspoon of each. And then just stir it up again. And then it will be ready to go in your soon to be overnight breakfast casserole. Smells so good already. Okay, do not forget this very important step. You need to spray your crock pot, especially for this recipe. You wanna spray it really good because this is an overnight recipe. You're not gonna be waking up like a zombie checking on it, or maybe you might if you're me, but you wanna make sure you spray it really good so it doesn't stick. Okay, so when you get that taken care of, you're gonna take your hash browns, you're gonna pour just about a third of the bag into the bottom, because we're gonna make layers here. And then you're gonna put some cheese and your ham. I have my ham in a strainer because it did have water added. And you wanna make sure your ham is fully cooked. Keep that in mind, whatever ham you do use, make sure it's fully cooked. And you're gonna add about a third of your ham mixture. And this recipe also calls for four cups of cheese. So I'll probably have to pull out a little more cheese from my fridge thank goodness I have it and then you're just going to pour this on in thirds as well and then of course continue the process super easy and you're going to make three layers this makes a lot this would be good for potluck you know maybe not right now with coronavirus and everything going on but this does make a good amount so keep that in mind i would use a five or six quart crock pot at least for this recipe it's going to be so good All right, so after you're done with all the ingredients, like I said, so easy. You're going to put your crock pot on low. You're going to set it for about six hours. And you're going to let it cook. And when you wake up in the morning, you are going to have a delicious breakfast. All right, so when it had about 30 minutes or so left, I came in and I actually took the top off and separated the edges from the sides so it wouldn't stick too much. I really recommend doing that just in case. And then when I woke up in the morning, I had me a plate. Alex had already ate him some and it was so delicious. This was actually our first time making it with ham. We also make it with sausage sometimes too, so definitely try that. I highly recommend it. Thank you so much for watching all of my slow cooker and crock pot dinner recipes. I hope you enjoyed them. I try to make all of my recipes here on my channel super family friendly. So make sure you subscribe and stick around for more recipes and grocery hauls. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye.